Aloha Hawaii, I'm Wendy Lowe, your friend as we journey to take your health back. We are coming to you live from downtown Honolulu from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii in the Pioneer Plaza building. Today our universal discussion will be with or be on work-life balance for the modern vahini in Hawaii. And what I would like you to take away from today's discussion is that we recommend you to ask for help and seek out networks of the minds minded like-minded women to support you through your life's journey today we are very honored to welcome brooke lee miss hawaii usa 1997 miss hawaii usa 1997 and then miss universe 1997 all wrapped up in one beautiful and stunning young lady and also the host and producer of the martin vahini hawaii welcome brooke Thanks. Hey, boy, wow, what a title. You got so many accolades and titles according to, you know, all the history books. I just books. like that you said I was young. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Of all of those titles, Thanks. young attracts you most. And you are very young <laughs> and stunning at this point. Thank We're you. so excited to have you here. I'm excited to be here. So, Brooke, you know, you've been gone for a while here and there. Yes, and I, I just want to take people back mm. to your good roots of Pro City. <laughs> <laughs> Pacific Palisades, to be exact, the yes. number 53 bus, yes. <laughs> Born and raised in Pacific Palisades, uh, the Leeward side. I went to grade school out at Our Savior Lutheran. I went to preschool at Children's House in Pearl City, right there in Palisades. And I got into Punahou, early acceptance in the fifth grade. Went there to my sophomore year, then went to lab school for a year. Loved it there. And finally got into Kamehameha schools after trying since kindergarten. Got in my senior year. Wow. So I went. And I graduated as a class of 1989 yes. from Kamehameha schools, Kapalam. Campus. Wow, perseverance. Yeah. Perseverance. Yeah. That's what it's all about, right, girl? I guess. Yeah, yeah. it works. I guess. It works with you. Yeah, and this is just the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, Brooke, I've, I've known you for a while. A while, yes. <laughs> Let's not say how long, but yeah. yes. A while. Yes. Uh, when we were sponsoring the pageants yes. back in the day, and I was very taken back with you Which and your Which is ironic because you were doing candies. I was doing candies. And chocolates. we were training. Yes. But you'd be giving us candies like all day long. <laughs> My job was lady. to see your resistance. <laughs> And your discipline. It was a test. Yes, it I was. It. And you, you passed. I did. You I did. did. You did. Until you got that other crown and yeah. then it all came out. That's true. But so I knew you then. Yes. And then you came, you won the title as Miss Hawaii USA. Yes. 1997. Yes. Take us back to that day. How did that feel for you? Uh, well, the prehistory to that is I had been running in the other system, which is the Miss Hawaii America system, mm -hmm. for about three years. Mm -hmm. I was horrible at it. Um, I ran in preliminaries, then went to the state title, lost, uh, ran in a preliminary another year, went to the state title, lost, uh, did it again, lost. I was like the Susan Lucci of the pageant system. Um, and then I aged out, as they say, and then I went to the Miss Hawaii USA system, which is a little older, after you graduate from college. And I hit it the first time out the gate. So I became Miss Hawaii USA in December of 96, went wow. to... Shreveport, Louisiana for Miss USA in January of 97, won that, and then moved on to Miss Universe in May of that year and won that. So it was a really good year. Wow, it was a great year. It was year. a really good year. Yes, yeah. 1997. It was a good year. A great year. You know, um, the whole story behind or the lesson learned from your beginning for Kamehameha Schools, Perseverance, right. and then going for the title. Yeah. Working hard, knowing what you wanted to do and wanted to accomplish, yes. and not giving up. Is there anything you would like to take, have a takeaway for the young women and the men, of course, of Hawaii, uh, of not giving up? Yeah, I mean, for me, I think I tell a lot of contestants because I get it a lot. People want me to train them for pageants. I wasn't really ever trained. Uh, you can probably see that when I say I ate everything twice is my answer. <laughs> but um, I tell girls, I won, a, I won a scholarship my first year that I lost at Miss Hawaii America. Um, of $17,000 to Shamanan University. So yes. I transferred from, I was at Leeward Community College just figuring it out and got to go to this, you know, next level kind of Shamanad private college. I graduated with a degree in English debt-free, which is a pretty big deal, mm -hmm. um, all from running in a pageant that I didn't even win. So I tell girls all the time, run just to run, run just to get scholarships. If you win, you win great. If you don't, at least you got an education and you're debt-free. Like right. either way, it's a win-win. Right. So. You know, um, <clears throat> I've been on board with the Miss Hawaii and the Miss Hawaii USA mm -hmm. system for about mm, 22, 23 years now. Right. And that is my full-time focus. 
for me when I meet young ladies. Mm -hmm. And uh, my first question to them would be, hey, what college are you going to? And they'll answer, some of them will answer, auntie, I'm not going to college right Can't now. Can't afford it. Can't afford it. Yep, exactly. exactly. So then I would bring up the topic, yep. hey, would you consider right. running in the Miss Hawaii or the Miss Hawaii USA right. scholarship pageants? Right. And then they would say, well, I never thought about it. I says, well, here's my card. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Right. Go check it out. Right. And if it makes sense to you, it resonates with you, give it a shot. Because I also think, especially in today's society with Instagram, social media, all of those things, I think there's a lot of uh, people who have a, a, an attitude towards pageants that they used to not have because there's so many reality shows and you can get famous in so many other ways. Uh, but for me, the pageant, I was a model my whole life. I started modeling when I was like five or six years old. No one ever asked me my opinion until I ran in a pageant. Up until that point, I got in the clothes, I got on the stage, I walked on a runway, and I went home. Nobody asked me what I thought about gun control. Nobody asked me what I thought about the world. Nobody asked me anything. <laughs> you just come, you take your pictures, and you leave. So when people, when you're required to have an opinion about something, that was addicting to me. So right. I ran in pageants because it forced me to have opinions about things, and then I got kind of good at it. And then the thing on stage where you had to answer questions, that just became like sport for me. Right. Some girls, it's harder for them, and they don't like that. Mm -hmm. For me, that was like, I'd be like, gloves off. I'd be like, bring the question. Bring it on. Yeah, interview, bring it. <laughs> but you know, that's so, uh, that's so key because in general, a lot of the local girls, they're a little bit more introverted. They're not right. outgoing as much and, and I will back say in the that day. The pervading culture is if you're a pretty girl, then mm -hmm. that's all it's really required of you. Mm -hmm. And I, I think in pageants, it's the same way. There are a lot of girls that answer questions on stage. They say things like world peace or they forget where Iran is. Or There's a lot of girls that flub. Right. Mm -hmm. But there's also a lot of girls that when asked the question on stage in 90 seconds in a bikini, you have to like balance the Middle East and what's going on with <laughs> and you know, the control. world and, yes. yeah, and have a, an opinion. A lot of them come up with amazing things, which yes. nobody would be able to do. Not even a exactly. senator, especially exactly. in a bikini and in heels in front uh, of George Hamilton. Yes. I mean, it's like you know, the pressure from the pressure from the pressure. So I think pageants in a lot of ways gets a bad rap because people met me during my year and they'd be like, you're so smart. And you'd be like, I'd rather you expect me to be smart and then right. just be disappointed than have such a low ball. Like if I'm not dribbling down the front of my dress, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. like, yay, gold star for you. Like that kind of stuff bummed me out. Cause I right. was like, did you not see me say I'd eat everything twice? Like, right. come on, <laughs> what are you talking to? And so that's the, the real reason why I get involved is because I want each wahini of Hawaii to max out Yes. who they were created to be and give them this opportunity to put that mic in front of their face mm -hmm. and ask them those questions on world peace, on gun control right. and the wall and see what they have to say. And if they don't know the answer, by golly, they're going to go and research it yep. and they will have an answer. Because their feet the are in the fire and they're yes. required to have yes. to do that. And sometimes in life, you're just not required. When you're a pretty girl, especially in today's age with Instagram and all of this instant gratification, you really just can get away with a lot, you know right, what I mean? And, right. get, and get the likes and get, you know, conditioned to feel like I don't need to be a certain way. Whereas when the pageants, you gotta fulfill these four things. You have yes. to wear a swimsuit, an evening gown, answer a question on stage, and do an interview. Right. Go. Right. So, I mean, it really is a boot camp. I it is. It is a great it's really, boot camp. It's, people sell it short. They really do. Oh, no, and I, that's why I'm never gonna give up, and I truly believe in trying to max out all of you to create you to be who you are yeah. in here, but you just didn't have that opportunity. Right. And so by giving these girls that platform of a stage and a mic mm -hmm. and a voice, right. I tell you, we are creating some amazing yeah. women of Hawaii. Absolutely. And giving them scholarships and to boot, you know, yes. it's like, and giving them platforms, showing them, you know, a way to go on to other things. So they tell them one girl's going to win. Any other given night, Venezuela would have won that night at Miss Universe. Any other given night, if one judge had had indigestion, eggshell light number five was off on my, on my left side, some other girl would have won. And that would have been a different lifestyle for me. But so, you know, but I got the opportunity. I won. I took it. What I if you don't win, you got scholarships. You got this exactly. opportunity. You were able to grow. Move on. The shiny thing lasts a year. Right. But the education lasts forever. Right. Forever. You know? And the so. memories and the growth. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, getting back to that one um, slide where you finally saw your name in print. Yeah. Berkeley, you know, Miss Hawaii or right. Miss USA. How did that really feel when you saw your name in print and it was now being yeah. reality? I honestly, those were being sent to my house. And what happens when you win? Like you win Miss USA, like you say in Shreveport, Louisiana you're whisked away. Right. Like you don't ever go back home for like months later. Right. So whatever you packed in your bag to go to the competition is like all you have until right. they buy you other stuff. So I was on the run. I didn't really like get to register thing. I just was like, this is my job now. Right. So I have to meet all these people, live with a strange lady in an apartment in LA. 
you know, and just keep going. And so I didn't really register those things until much later. I was proud that I got to wave the shaka and that that was like a picture that went across the world. Like that to me was like, yes, yeah. yes. Well, that was our, yes. our signature, right? Yeah. Yes. Because they told me at Miss Universe, when I went to Miami as Miss USA, they were like, okay, CBS sponsors, I mean, CBS censors are saying, if you get that far, do not flash the shaka sign because a lot of people think it's the sign of the devil. And I was like, you got to be joking. And they're like, we're just warning you. We got a lot of mail after Miss USA. Just if you get that far, just tamper down on the shaka. But as soon as I won, I was like, what's up? What's up? What's up? I mean, it's just, it comes out, it's right? Innate. Innate, you cannot innate. stop it. It's right. just part of your DNA. Right. Get over it. Right. So. And so now let's go back now to the Miss Universe stage. Yes. And they're crowning you and they're going to ask you that one glorious yeah. question. No, this is a loaded question. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. So share with the audience. So here's the backstory on that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> this is a two part series. So Miss USA, at Miss USA pageant, similar questions were asked. Alicia Machado, who is the current Miss Universe from Venezuela. Okay, let me back up. Donald Trump bought the pageant as I was going to Shreveport, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. So he bought the pageant. He was now our boss. Right. He didn't like that she had been gaining a bunch of weight. Right. So he started like putting her on treadmills on CNN and then calling her Mass Universe or Miss <laughs> Piggy or whatever, like just <laughs> degrading stuff. Um, and so my question to Miss USA was, if you were put in her place and she's sitting right in front of you and you had gained all this weight, what would you do? And like, you're like, you talking about this Miss Universe in front of her, like she's not here. That's rude, first of mm -hmm. all. Secondly, whatever. So I answered that question. I said, you're Miss Universe. You are who you are. Your nose gets bigger or smaller. Whatever. You're Miss Universe. Suck it. So I won Miss USA and then I went to Universe. They continued to like harp her no matter what. Mm -hmm. They couldn't even let her go out. Right. So... There was a 1-800 number you had to call in. Should the new Miss Universe be held to a weight clause in her contract? Like, it was like a whole thing. They couldn't even let her have her moment. So when it got to the end, and I made it that far, and they were like, if you had no rules in your life, what would you do? Like, I had to take the shot. Right. Because I was like, I'm Miss USA. I already want a car. I already want a boat. I already want, like, I don't need to win the universe, but I certainly need to make a statement. So right. that's why I said I'd eat everything twice. And what did, yeah, how did you say it? I said, I would eat everything in the world. You do not understand. I would eat everything <laughs> twice. And if I could drop the mic, I would have, and then I walked stage left. Wow. I did not think I was going to win. <laughs> I stretch of the imagination. Girl, but that's I ironically. I did not think I was going to win. Ironically, that. that was part of why you. That I mean, was like, yes. I was just like, you know what? Because you had a voice, girl. I you had a voice. I was just tired of them, like, harping on this girl's weight for all of these. It was like, okay, you did it once. That's fine. You tried to get your PR off it. Great. She's giving up her title. Like, just let her go in peace. You know, mm -hmm. just, like, send her with aloha and go. Nope, even on our way out, you got to be like, should the new Miss Universe be able to? I was like, if I get to the top three and there's even a chance to be able to work it into the sentence, I am taking my shot. Take your shot. And, and, you, and that you did. So now um, you've won. The yes. crown is on your head. Now yes. you're the Miss Universe 1997. Uh, yes. So, you know, I work with a lot of girls. And on, when they come to me, yeah. I always ask them, do you know what you're getting into? <laughs> no. And, you know, they have no clue because they're going for Miss Hawaii USA or Miss right. Hawaii or their preliminary. Right. I just want the scholarship. And then they win the title. And right. then they win. And then did you realize what you were getting yourself into no. when you went that far? I had no idea. But, see, here's the thing. USA is really where everything happened. Because universe, you just extend your tour duty for three more months. You're the same girl. I mean, you're not because you're whatever. You're international. But... You work for the same office, you live in the same apartments, one above the other. So I knew what it was like because I was Miss USA and mm -hmm. I was either going to get myself a new roommate or someone to hang out with or I was going to become that girl. It was, so Universe was kind of like, it was just a continuation. USA, when I won, that was kind of like, I never even thought in my wildest dreams that was going to happen. And then when it did, and then, you know, the whole, the whole staff comes at you and, you know, you've got like car services and you don't wow. ever like know where a vacuum is like you got people doing stuff for vacuum? you i never put gas in a car for a year i didn't drive for a year i mean it was bizarre it was bizarro land wow. for sure what a life and so now you're we've dealt into the life of miss Hawaii usa miss usa miss universe yeah. and now i'm sure a lot of the girls out there are raring to go knowing that there is more than just a crown but there's a massive responsibility there is. until death do you part i should <laughs> say that's a fine print nobody even talks about that part and i tell the girls all the time <laughs> But right now, bro, we're going to have to take a, a one-minute break. Okay. And when we get back, we'll learn more about what, what is Brooke up to today. We'll see. We'll be right back. 
Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome a studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back. The Think Tech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu, where we are very privileged to have the honor of Miss Universe 1997, Brooke Lee. In the first half of the show, we discussed her journey from being a Palisades, a Pearl City Palisades girl, to winning the title of Miss Hawaii USA 1997, to Miss USA 1997, and then on to being Miss Universe 1997. Let's fast forward the clock a few years. So, Brooke, after you won all those glorious titles, yes. and then your year of reign has concluded, yes. and then sad, you find sad yourself day. Yeah, sad day, sad with day. Draws and sad yeah. Days. Yeah. and then you find yourself living in the mainland yes. for a few years, and then you meet the man of your dreams. Uh, sometimes he's a dream. Yeah. <laughs> well, We're 13 <laughs> years in, so mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, it's, sounds it's like a dream to me. Definitely a reality now. <laughs> 13 years and still going. So. And, and what do you do? What does he do? Uh, well, at the time, he was working in movies in mm -hmm. L.A. We had met through a mutual, for a childhood friend of his. I had done a travel channel show. She was a producer on it, and I was the host. And so she had introduced us, and we just sort of hit it off. Um, and we started dating, got engaged, got married in about six months, mm -hmm. um, and wow. then eloped, and then had my son within a year. So, very good. Yeah. And I was very privileged to meet him. Yeah. And he came to my home and you guys work so lovely together. Yeah. I'm very happy. He's a good happy kid. for you. He's a good kid. Because you're, I mean, of course, your whole life story is per perseverance. Mm. Getting to the school that you wanted to go to, right. getting a title right. worldwide, internationally. Right. Even kids. Kids were a perseverance. <laughs> yes. And then having a man of your dreams, and then now you have two yeah. children. Three, if you count my husband. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know I was introduced to Bailey and yes. to Finnegan. Yeah. So shout out to them. I know they're watching <laughs> Mommy. They're so proud of you, as you are so proud of them. Yeah. But in that one shot, I know I can see you being the mama. I am, yes. Yes. Yeah, so now you're a worldwide leader, mm. uh, icon. You're a wife. Your mother, mm -hmm. and now we're going to talk to you a little bit about your career because now you're going in deep into your career. And so I just want to know, Brooke, how does one balance all that you have on your plate? Again, from being a title holder, uh, not just local or international, a national universe mm -hmm. title, then being married, a wife, mm -hmm. being a, a woman that you are, mother and career woman. How do you balance all this? I will say it was easier on the mainland because mm -hmm. when you live in Hollywood, there's like a totem pole of fame and there wasn't as much pressure as there is here having moved home. Uh, I was a stay at home mom. I had the luxury of doing that because cost of living is different there. Mm -hmm. So I stayed home with the kids. I auditioned and did shows whenever I wanted to, not necess necessarily all the time. But then we moved here uh, last July and my kids started school and you know, Hawaii is a whole different beast. So, mm -hmm. you know, I started dancing hula back in Waikiki like I did when I was growing up. Uh, and then I got a show um, on Kehai, Modern Wahine Hawaii. And that's like a train that just keeps on <laughs> trucking. Um, so, you know, I've got like three jobs, like three jobs, right. which is the norm here, you right. know. Right. But it's a lot for someone who spent 20 years on the mainland, you know, living a different type of lifestyle to come here and do this. It's kind of like, a little bit discombobulated. So, I mean, I try to balance it, 
There's really no other way to do it. If you don't balance, everything crashes to the ground, and that's not an option. So yeah, not just, an option with us. You just have to keep on keeping on. You know, right. keep moving or you sink. Right, so. and I know, I know family is so important to you. Yeah. And so that must have had a uh, play on wanting to move back to Hawaii as well. Yeah, I mean, my husband was a caregiver for his dad who uh, had gotten really sick over the last two years. Mm -hmm. um, and then he passed away, and that was kind of when we made the decision that since he had fulfilled those obligations, he really didn't have as much things tying to him to L.A. anymore, so that maybe it was a good transition for us to move to Hawaii so that I could spend time with my aging uh, parents and have my parents be able to see their grandkids more often and have that experience with them. So that's kind of why we sort of matriculated towards moving back to Hawaii is wow. for family. Well, yeah. and you know, in the one slide here, I can see you with your mother. Yeah. And of course, we all know everyone in the world, in Hawaii world, knows Tony Lee. <laughs> um, she's just a all go around all yeah. to cultural events person. Just every at every event, I bump into your mom, and it's we always. It's really weird because people thought she was a pageant mom because I'd won all these things. They're like, "Oh, you know, how'd you raise Miss Universe?" And she's like, "I didn't even know she was running in pageants <laughs> at first. Like, I, I was like the last to get the memo. She really was not hands on with that stuff at all. She could have cared less. And when she, we were at Miss Universe, and other parents are like preening their daughters and do whatever. Like, she was like, not nowhere to be found. She was like somewhere in the back. They're like, where's your mom? Why isn't she here holding all your things? It's like ah, she's busy. Well, right. your mom is surely busy, yeah. and she has a whole world of her own that yeah. she looks after. She does Hawaii Music Hall of Fame, yes. she does the Royal Hawaiian Band, she does the Aloha Week Parade, Civic Clubs, Kamehameha School Alumni. I mean, she makes me tired. Like, since yes. I've been home, I can't keep up. I can't keep up with her. <laughs> I can't keep well, up. Well, what a good path to follow. Yeah. You know, so you got to keep up or you got to sink and further I know. Far, it's like behind. a high mark though. It's a high mark. To, yeah. <laughs> to, but it's okay. You've got that mark and you're, yeah. you're, you're meeting her and she's so proud of you. Yeah. I see people like those icons. You see those emojis, like just the eyeballs looking sideways. I feel like people are looking at me like that when they see me with her, they're like, you're next. <laughs> passing the torch. Exactly. Passing the torch. I'm like, okay, pump your brakes people. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, um, exactly what she was involved with all the Hawaiian cultural events. Yes. And so for you, the woman of the times. Now you jumped into this program of mm -hmm. yours, yeah. which airs. Uh, I know I've already watched two segments. Sundays, Sundays, on Sundays. and seven. It rebroadcasts like throughout the week on KHON, but it's primarily fresh episodes every Sunday, 7 p.m. on K High for the next year. So. Seven, and then if you miss it at seven, it goes on at 11. Yes. So yes. we get to see you twice on Sunday. Yes. And so now my Sunday ritual is church. Lunch, surf, and brook. <laughs> and so that's what we're going to do. And that's Aww, what we thanks. encourage all because you're going to have some amazing guests on board. I hope and, so. And um, yeah. just premiering what women of Hawaii are doing. Yes. We're talking about, you know, everything from design in your home, space saving, uh, makeup tips, health tips. But the part I love the most is interviewing women from here and from the mainland. Because we have Chris Yamaguchi on the show. We've had other women uh, who have Hawaii hearts but are not necessarily from here. Um, but I just like talking to the women and sharing their stories and holding them up and, um, you know, just giving them a little bit of light because there's a lot of women that do a lot in the community that really don't get the accolades I think they should and that people exactly. should know what they're doing, like you. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, these are ways that I can use some of my light to shine on other people and let other women know that this is what's out there. Uh, girls growing up through the ranks, if you're 20 years old, you don't know what you're supposed to do with your life, you're in college, you're flailing at HPU. And you turn on my show and you see this woman who's like the first president of Adventist Health Castle, who started exactly. off as a thoracic nurse. You're like, she can do it. Right. And they all see it. Every woman I've spoken to who've gone wherever they've gone in their field, they're like, I never knew I could do it. Mm -hmm. People didn't tell me I could do it. Right. I had to go make it happen. And now I'm turning around to others and saying, come on up. The water's fine. And so I'm really grateful to be able to be part of that. Journey. You know, I mean, just like this show, Think Tech Hawaii, you know, we are a voice, not just you and I talking story and meeting some friends at the mall or at the restaurant, right. but we're able to reach so many more people. Mm -hmm. And so your show is so important, just as this show is very important. So, you know, the title of my talk is Take Your Health Back. Mm -hmm. And so my journey is to just make women and, and the people of Hawaii right. more aware of right. how simple it is to take your health back, mm -hmm. whether it's marital health, right. whether it's professional health, right. whatever it may be. And so when people see you, mm -hmm. you know, 21 years ago, I believe around there, you had the, you, the title of Miss Universe. Yes. Okay. 
So you look just the same. Nah, people say that, but I just you gotta be a moving target. As long as you keep moving, people can't like z they can't zero no. in. You just gotta be a blur. You gotta stay a blur. You know, just dodge you're me. still dodge a me. fine looking blur, girl. Uh, well. And so I'm what I'm trying to get at is how important is it for you uh, with health and nutrition? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have children, so usually when you're a mom, you eat the leftovers on yeah, your kids' plate. Yeah, that is plate, true. That's a thing. You know, and that you eat what really they want. Thing. But how do you uh, emphasize that? Obviously, you're doing something right. Well, I think a lot of it is because you work a lot here, so you don't have time to eat. But, um, I mean, the nutrition thing I haven't quite figured out yet. Like, I'm not a big eater, I'll be very honest. People who know me know that when I said I'd eat everything, I'd eat it twice on stage, they knew it was a political statement because I'm not an eater. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, like, dream about food. My husband's an eater. Like, he's dreaming about food from the minute he steps up. I'm not that person. But, like, with my kids now, it's really important to kind of control what's happening with them. I like to be like a hands-off mom, you figure it out. But like, you know, when they're eating candy 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and then you got to go to the dentist's office and get all their teeth fixed. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like on you, mom. You know, like the dentist is looking at you like, she, you got to say no. You can't just let her mow through whoppers like all day long. Like she's five. Make a choice, you know. So I'm working on that part. Like I really want to talk with some nutritionists on my show. and Because my son, it's interesting, since I moved here, my son's uh cholesterol level has been slightly elevated since we moved here. When we lived on the mainland, it was not. And mm. I think what it is is I'm working more now, right. so I'm not in control of what's going on the table as much because I'm off working at night or right. working through the day, right. and I don't know what he's eating. Right. And if I'm looking at his, my husband... <laughs> Well, let me just put it this way. I know, I don't know what you're <laughs> you, you did come to my home. Right. And we will be on your show next yes. Sunday. Yes. And we're very excited about that. And um, when you came to my home, mm -hmm. I made you and your family yeah. kale smoothies. Fresh kale smoothies. Right. And, yes. you're, and you said, if my son would drink this, yeah. we're, we're sold. We're good. Because right. he doesn't usually like that stuff. Right. But we cut the kale. Yeah. We blended it up. And he drank the whole thing. And he thing. drank, and he drank it. Some, my husband's one as well. Exactly. And yeah. he actually loved yeah. it. So, you know My what? daughter. Yeah. Not She's a so tough much. one, right? Yeah. But, but you got one out of two. You got her the gummies, right? Though. One out of two, yes. not bad. Yes. And so, and he says hope for him. And so, mom, for you, you know, just get that woman or get that person on your show yeah. to teach. And when you're, when she's sharing the message, you're actually going to be receiving all right. that knowledge. Because I think moms need help. Oh, for sure. I mean, because there's so many choices, and you just don't know what to feed them. Because right. easy is like tantamount sometimes, mm -hmm. like. It, Chicken nuggets out of the freezer, <laughs> out of no, the pan. Just, no, mom, I you know, just when say you, no. When I told you that, you're, you were like, oh, oh my God, no, I can't no. believe you're really your kids. Oh, my gosh. Brooke, it's yeah. like, oh, 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 our time is up, and I wish we could continue on. Maybe we'll invite you back again so that you can show the Hawaii and the world what a real mom is like, <laughs> a real woman of Hawaii right. is really like. Not, And, you know, you're going to see the growth in yourself yeah. as well as what we'll the message is. We'll come back, we'll do a nutrition thing after I learn a few things. Very good. Yeah. So so we just wanted to say congratulations, Thank Brooke. You. you. were a great representative, you are a great re representative, and you will continue on being the Miss Universe of Hawaii. And we are so, so proud Thank of you. Thank you. We love you very Thank much. You. So from now, aloha to everyone.